do not understand scripture by reasoning except my reasoning aligns with the spirit of revelation of the word of God. The Bible says in Romans 15.4 from the GNT version, everything written in the scripture was written for our learning to teach us in order that we might have hope. And we know that in Romans 5.5, 5, hope does not disappoint. Hope is not a concept. Hope is a person that we put our trust in. That person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given to us. This morning, brethren, we are going to talk about a well. How many of you here know well? A well. Everybody knows a well. When you drop something in the well, can you pick it up? Back up? Can you get it? When, it? when you throw something into a well, it's gone. You'll never see in this life. Maybe in another lifetime. So we're going to talk about this well that our pastor has ably given to us. Each individual who is in Christ where has the well of love in them. I was talking with a sister this morning when we were coming and uh, she told me about the struggles that we all have as believers. The struggle is that we wrestle too much with our intellect. Our minds are governed by intellect. When it comes to spiritual things, I'm pleading. I'm doing what? Pleading. Your mind is anatoma to revelation. The two arrows. Very different. If you want to talk about spiritual things, forget your reasoning. The only time it's acceptable is when your reasoning lines up with the word of God. That's the only time. So, our key today is learning how to draw from that well. Brethren, I beg us to understand this. Many of us have been in Christ for long. People like me, over 40 years. But I have made a mistake. I'm not talking about you. That I, when I want to love, I love the human way. There's a human love which is different from God's love. We studied last week about soil, which is love in the family. Remember? Yes. We studied eros, which is romantic love among human beings. We studied filio, which is friendship, friendship kind of love. We studied that. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. But we said there was one love that was different from all these other loves. That love is called agape love. Agape, we wanted to summarize. It has so many meanings in Greek, but we summarize it in three words. Agape love constitutes first an unconditional love. I ask you the question, if you or you know any human being who loves like God, do, do they accept everybody? Would you accept a robber to come into your house? Would you accept a child molester to come into your house. But God accepts everybody. Unconditionally. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter what. He accepts you as you are. Number two. We said God's love is sacrificial. How is human love sacrificial? Human love is sacrificial in the fact that it says, oh, I gave you this thing today. Last year I gave you something. And, and you know, I can I keep giving where well, he gives sporadically? God doesn't do that. He gives where it hurts. He gives his time. He gives his gifts. What have you that what do you have that you have not received? What is it? Please think a little bit. The air you breathe. Tell me. Where did you get it from? And God keeps giving and giving and giving and giving. He never stops. 
I told you the last time that in America, I've stayed there for a few years, you hear some people tell you, I love my cat. I love my car. I love my wife. Wait a minute. What, what, what are you, are you, is there something right? That you love your wife like you love your cat and you love your car. So today, like we will do in all the series, we love God's way. Say it with me. We love God's way. We love when we love unconditionally. When we call, we love sacrificially. And when we love eternally. You know people in your lives who have loved you, but you did something and they said, over. That's not God's love. And you claim, I love, I love. That is human love. We don't have that kind of love. Now, the key, if you want to forget everything about this message, this one key. God wants you to love him back. His way. Amen. They didn't get it. Amen. Don't tell me I sing to the Lord, I pray, I clap, I do all this. That's okay. But that's not God's love. God's love is getting your basket or getting your cup or getting a container into the well. Into the well. Into the well. That he has poured abroad where? In my heart. Where? In my heart. Where? In my heart. Any other love is unacceptable to God. It might be acceptable to you. You might think you are doing the right thing. Can be boasting there. It's unacceptable. God says, I don't accept it. God only accepts things that come from him. That's why he gave it to you. To love like he loves. Not to love like you and I think love is. That's why Jesus said in John 7:38. Whoever believes in me, rivers, what are I calling it? Rivers of living water will flow from within them. Rivers of living water will flow, not from outside of them. That's why God chose to put his spirit in you that gives you his love continually. So from today, for those listening to me in media, everywhere, and those who are sitting here, I beg us to start loving God's way. No more your way or some other preacher's way. Love the Bible way. Love the Bible way. What does the Bible say? I love that way. Will you say amen with me? I'm going to make a statement which if some people are taking notes, they can write. If not, they will listen to the message. This is a statement. I'm going to back that statement up with scripture. If I'm willing to do what God has assigned me, I repeat it. If I'm willing to do what God has assigned me, he's more than able to do in and through me extraordinary things in this life. Amen. Let me repeat it. If I'm willing to do what God has assigned me, the assignment is from God, not from man. He's more than able to do in and through me extraordinary things in my life. Who wants extraordinary things to be done in their life? Thank you for raising your hands. And I hope you, you too do. The key is allow him to work in me and through me. Philippians 2.13 backs it up. says, God is working where? In me, giving me his desires, not my, my desires are selfish, they are, they are terrible. Because my desires are tied to my flesh and myself. So God chooses to give me his desires so that I can obey him. And my power and your power is limited. He gives us his power to please him. So brethren, let's be clear. Let's be very clear. You cannot please God. With your abilities, with your intellect, you cannot. It's unacceptable to God. You have to use God's power to please Him. Because it's perfect. God accepts nothing but perfection. That's why He equips you with these things. So you may give it back to Him. Are we understanding? 
And I came up with a small formula. How many of you know CPC Bali? CPC Bali, or about two, three people. Okay. CPC is a little acrostic that I came up with that on how to respond to God's agape love. C stands for choice, intentional, a decision. Every time I want to love, I must think of C. I must think of the fact that I have a will to make a choice. I have to be intentional about it. And it's a decision. P. P stands for proof. If you say you love me, prove it. God says he loves the world. He died for the world. Prove it by action, not just by talking. There are all verses to this, and I cannot give these verses now because we have very limited time. On Wednesday night, Zoom, I'll give you all the verses. Finally, committed. God wants people who are committed to his cause. Amen? Amen. Who are committed. Not, not walking today, the next day, either out of course. No, no, no. He wants people who are committed for the long haul. And listen to this. He says, he who has begun the good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. He is committed. Are you committed? I leave that to you. What are the two text messages for this morning? Why do I have to respond to God using his well in me? Why? Can we all read 2 Corinthians 9.15? Read it with life and joy. Go. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The gift of the person of Lord Jesus Christ. Any human mind that can describe it. I don't know. I don't think so. The Bible says that gift, you cannot describe it in words. You have to know it by revelation, not by reasoning. Will you say amen with me? So, if I have to apply this message, I have to draw from the well of love in me, not outside of me. Every morning, I draw from the well, the well of love. Every afternoon, I draw from the well of love. Every evening, I draw from the well of love. Every night I'm sleeping, I draw from the well of love. From, from the well, of, uh, well of, uh, of love. Whose love? God's love. That has been poured abroad where? In my heart. Take up your right hand. Say, Lord, Lord I, thank you I thank you that the well of God's love, God's love is in me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The first love language. I have been able to gather 12 of God's languages. Somebody came up, um, somebody who is teaching about marriages. He said, he called them love languages. He doesn't know, many people he doesn't know, but God has his love languages recorded in the book. I've been able to glean 12 of them. There are many more. And this morning, we won't look at 12, we'll look at six of them. In my opinion, the first of God's love language, the first, the first, the first is worship. If I want to express my love to God, the first word that should come to my mind is worship. Worship is number one. Worship tells you who you really adore, who you really admire, who is number one in your life. Worship tells you that. Who are you worshiping? Are you worshiping the crowd? Are you worshiping New Life Fellowship? Are you worshiping some so-called bishop and, and apostle and all of this? Is that what you're worshiping? I know of a church down the road many years ago, big church. They were arguing about the color of the carpet and the church split. And they call themselves spiritual church. Carpet. We express God's love, God's way by worshiping him. 
we worship, we adore, and we praise him for who he is, not what he has done. Worship, praise, adoration is reserved only to God for who he is. And there are over 50 Hebrew names that we use in worshiping God. Amen? Amen. If you come to our prayer line on Saturday morning, sometimes our pastor leads us in. He calls them. What was the last one you had this past Saturday? El Olam. El Olam, meaning the everlasting God. And there's so many of them. Brethren, you can just get so, so high in the spirit, so drunk in the spirit, as you move in your house, just take those things. You don't need to memorize them. Write on a piece of paper and go around. Amen? Amen? You will be so lifted. Every time you call on the name of God, something happens to you. And the criteria is to worship him in spirit and in truth. Simple. Don't go about all these doctrines. Worship me in spirit and in truth. That's the whole lesson. The other thing is people talk about posture when I'm worshiping God. Some people think that by standing, by sitting, by kneeling, by dancing, by jumping, that's how you worship God. All of the above are right if it comes from a pure heart. But you go to some places, there's a church I know somewhere, I won't call the name. The women sit on one side, the men sit on one side. All these man-made doctrines that come to spoil the work of God. I went and preached there many, many years ago. And I asked the pastor, why are men sitting and women? He said, well, we don't want any uh, covetousness. I leave that. I, I rest my case. i like us now to see what worship does as we worship him. I want you to read these verses as if you are drinking the best juice. Hallelujah. Amen. I like us to read Psalm 63 verse 3 from the message. Read it with joy. Go. Here I am in the place of worship. Stop. Stop. When you come in here or when you're at home, you tell the Lord, Lord, in the place of worship. It's between me and you. I don't want my husband or my wife. Forget this, all these people. Between me and uh, that's worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, how are you worshiping God? Read it, go. I, I opened. Stop now. Some putting, when you are praying, you have to close your No, no, you can You can be praying and driving and opening your eyes. And you are worshiping your God. Let's leave all these man-made doctrines aside. Follow the word of God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, let's finish this part. When you are worshiping, you are. What's the, what's the verb there? You are. What are you doing? Drinking. Dr right drinking. Drinking in your strength and glory. You want strength? Worship God. You want to worship God in spirit and truth? Drink of that fountain of love that God has poured abroad in your hearts. Let's continue. Read for me Hebrews 13.5. Go. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. What is that sacrifice of praise? The fruit of the lips that acknowledge his name. Yahweh. 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 Amen. Now, because we are a serious church, we don't compare ourselves with other people. We want to go to heaven. Amen. Don't tell me I've been in church for 50 years. Don't tell me I've been reading the Bible or preaching and praying. Forget those things. We come to the SSAT. Remember that? Yes. It's on our website. This year, God told us, you and the Holy Spirit assess and evaluate your spiritual growth. We don't assess and evaluate our spiritual growth by the way we preach, by the way we sing, by the way we heal, by the way we do deliverance. No! You evaluate yourself on the traits, attributes, or virtues. 
So, how is a worship? Do you really worship? Do you worship occasionally? Or do you worship regularly? It's on you and your God. The 31st will have a meeting here, night. I would like people to come and say, oh, I had a new wife. I had a new baby. I had a new promotion and so on. Those things are good. Amen? Amen. But how is that different from people in the world? Hello, tell me. How is that different? But when I come up here, I said, look, I used to be a woman beater. I no longer beat my wife. Ha! Character change! That's what God wants from each one of us. If you are in church and your character has not been moving one inch, there's something wrong. You are a spiritual baby. Even if you can memorize the Bible from A to Z. But when the growth aspect comes up, and next week, don't miss this. We are going to be teaching you how you deal with difficult people in life with God's love, God's way. We all have difficult people, and sometimes we ourselves are difficult. All right. Don't, if you want to come and hear. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next one. So, I express God's love that I've pulled from the well by worshiping him. Say number one. Number two. Obeying his word promptly, which brings untold blessings. All of God's commandments, everything that God tells you to do, is tied with a blessing in the Bible. Everything that God says, do. There's a blessing attached to it. It depends on you if you want that blessing or not. If you obey, you get there. If you don't obey, very simple. I don't know why people are mixing up. Confused. Why? Very simple. Every time I take up this Bible and I obey anything that God says, there's blessing attached to it. So, you and I are hindering our blessings by not obeying it. I'll give an example of a guy. He was called King Saul. King Saul was told by God expressly to go and exterminate all the Amalekites. Destroy all of them. Because God who made them said, the Amalekites are wicked people, wicked to the core. Go and wipe them all out. King Saul said, ah, I've heard you. God gave him everything he needed. He needed the, the power, the, everything that he needed, the, the people and so on. King Saul went. You know what he did? He reserved the king, Agog. He didn't touch him. He took him. He took the fat calves, the lambs, everything that was good. Everything. Did you hear that? And he said, I'm going to offer it back to God. The man of God came. What's his name? Samuel. Samuel thank you, brethren. Samuel came. Because God spoke to him and said, go and see what King Saul has done. And he told Samuel, his prophet, he said, I told this guy to go and wipe out those people. There's a start story in one country that I know of where the former president said they should go and wipe out the whole village in the north. And one of the guys came and slept with us when he visited America you know, with us. And he was one of those who went and wiped. They killed everything. He chicken, everything he was killed. It is still in his conscience up there. I told him, I said, listen, if you receive Christ, he wiped you. He didn't go and do it on your own. The state gave you a lot, an order to go and kill. And as a soldier, if you didn't kill, you would have been killed yourself. So repent. Tell God you're sorry. Amen? Amen? Saul, God is punishment for disobedience. In fact, in scripture, the Bible calls what Saul did rebellion or the sin of witchcraft. Am I practicing witchcraft in the church? If I don't obey God's law, I am practicing witchcraft in the church. No matter how I think I'm a big prophet, big man of God, those things mean nothing to God. People on earth, should, <laughs> what? Obey the word of God. Amen. Period. Will you say amen with me? Amen. So, read with me 
the grace that God has given you. First Samuel 15, 22. Let's read together. Go. Samuel declared to King Saul, Has the Lord great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of rams. He was taken off the throne. The throne. Empire. In French, that means full. In America, it's called what? Period. So, don't three languages. Empire entry. Full stop. America call it period. Three languages, all meaning the same thing. Will you say amen with me? You are a great church. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, listen to this. People tell you that the laws of God are very grievous. They are hard to obey. If you meet most Christians, they will tell you, oh, this is hard. I told a sister this morning, I said, we Christians find the Christian life hard because we do not ask for help from the Holy Spirit. He says, I am your helper. How many times we get in trouble and then call him and say, come and help. We go away, we reason things and we do things mechanically. We want to, and we frustrate ourselves. And she shared with me that she misplaced something that she needed this morning to come to church. And she said, Holy Spirit, show it to me. It didn't take two minutes, she found it. Amen. 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 We preach like this on the pulpit. We beg you, go and do, do it. Do, do. Call, on the Holy, call, on, call on the Holy Spirit every second of your life. Amen. Let your life depend on the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't just hear and go here. Please. You're harming yourself. Nobody else. Simple. Will you say amen with me? Amen. Now, let us conclude this matter about keeping the commandments. James says if you keep nine out of ten, you've, you've lost all you've all, you've just blown all of them. Ah! What kind of mathematics is that? I keep nine commandments out of ten, and I lost everything? I failed in all? No! The Holy Spirit is there. Number two. Number Number This verse solves every problem about my thinking about the commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome why? because I have the help of my Holy Spirit are we getting a revelation of these things? if you use your mind, you fail if you depend on the revelation revelation, revelation you get it praise the name of Jesus now, let's evaluate ourselves with obeying. <coughs> Do you obey God rarely? Do you obey God occasionally? Do you obey God regularly? It's up to you. Amen? Not only does God want us to worship him, obey him, the third one is what I like the best. And people have their mics. Hallelujah, the singers, the wonderful singers in the church. Singing unto God always. You want to get out of depression? You want to get out of a mindset where you are anxious? Start singing. Start singing. Start singing. Sing with all your might. With all your might. You are singing unto who? Not to your own, not people who are listening to you. They are inconsequential. You are singing to God. Why are you singing to God? Because God first sang to you. God has been singing to you. From the day you believed, Zephaniah 317, it's not on, on the screen, in NIV, says God sings to us continually. Did you know that? Now you know. Let me read to you. The Lord, your God, is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quieten you with his love. Are you anxious? God will quieten you with his love. 
And like a baby, he will rock you. He will say, he will rejoice over you with singing. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. And he will say, oh yes, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. And he will say, he will rejoice for he with joy. He will save, he will save, he will rescue us. He will over here. Boom, boom, boom. He will rescue us. He will save. He will, he will sing. He, he will say. Yes, he will say. Ruth, please let the praise team learn this song. I learned this song many years ago when I was an undergraduate student in New York. Our church sang songs right from the Bible. This was one of them. The Lord. This is in, in the, the midst of thee oh, oh. is mighty yes, and, and he will say amen. the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty and he will say he will rejoice over thee with joy he will say he will say he will rescue us he will joy over thee he will rescue us he will joy over thee with singing. He will say, Yes, he will say. The verses sing out, sing out your thanks to him. Sing praises to our God. Sing a new song to the Lord. Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Evaluate yourself. Do you sing rarely? Do you sing occasionally? Do you sing regularly? The next one is developing the virtue of silence. Developing the virtue of silence. What does that mean? Knowing how to be still and be quiet to listen to God's voice. That's one of God's love languages. Will you say amen with me? Being still before the Lord. Focusing on him. His attributes, who he is, that's what makes you express my love to God. Let's have two verses. They mean the same thing. John 10, 14 and 16. Go. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and they know me and they do what? They listen to my voice. They crowd out all other voices and listen to my voice. Will you say amen with me? Amen. Do you listen to God rarely, occasionally, or regularly? So, not only do we express our love language by worshiping, by obeying, by singing, by listening, listening to his voice, and finally by giving back to support his kingdom agenda. Yes. We could just spend time on this alone. We have missionaries, we have church buildings, we have things that promote his, his work. Giving to charitable organizations, that's on you. Giving back. Now, hear what Paul wrote to the Corinthians. Let's read it together. Just as you excel in faith, in speech, in knowledge, and in complete earnestness, see that you also excel in the grace, in the grace of giving. In this church, we don't talk about tithe. People want to tithe, that's fine. They can live in the Old Testament and live under the law, that's fine. But in the New Testament, Jesus says, give, and it will be given to you. And Paul elucidates in two texts, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, is the pattern of the New Testament giving. It's grace giving. Do you hear that? Yes. It comes from the heart. It just doesn't put you in bondage. So, excel in grace giving. I'm not commanding you, but I want to test the sincerity of your love. Did you hear that? Yes. Your giving is not to... Well, God doesn't need anything from you and me. 
It is to test you. In Malachi, it says something that test me in this. Test me. Whenever money is concerned, God is telling you and me, I'm doing this to test you. Will you pass the test? Evaluate, rarely, occasionally, regularly. Will you say amen with me? Amen. The last, but not the least, is not only do we express our love language by worshipping, by obeying, by singing, by listening, by giving, the sixth one we want to examine is by remembering. What are we supposed to remember? Jesus' sacrificial death, burial, and resurrection. In participating in the Lord's Supper, which we call communion or Eucharist, we are remembering the high price Jesus paid to offer us forgiveness, obtain eternal life, and belong to God's eternal family. And the only reasonable response, response that I have to give back to God is to express my infinite gratitude. So every time I break bread, like we break in this church, every Sunday, don't miss out. We break bread here. Not as a rule, not as a routine, but because we are obeying the command of God. We break bread every time we meet. It's in the Bible. We're instructed to do that. And when we do it, we receive his blessings. Will you say amen? amen. And so let's read together 1 Corinthians 11, 23, 25. Go. On the night he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread and spoke a prayer of thanksgiving. He broke the bread and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Next, is not the cup of thanksgiving, sorry, it should be cup, for which we give thanks, a participation in the blood of Christ, and it's not the bread we break, a participation in the body of Christ. Do you break bread regularly? When we'll have house churches, that's churches meeting in, in houses from New Life Fellowship all over the city, the, those who will be leading those things when the leader feels led, they can break bread. It's not only meant when we get into this gathering. Amen? Because the Bible says they broke bread house to house. Will you say amen? Please, let's pray this prayer. Can you rise with me, please, as we close? Personalize this prayer. Wherever you see the word, my and I, put your name there. Amen? Amen? Make this your prayer. Can we pray together? Yes. Go. May William's roots go down deep into the soil of God's marvelous love. And may William be able to feel and understand as all God's children should, how long, how wide, how deep, and how high his love really is. And to experience this love for myself. God bless you.